Hey there, and welcome back to XCOM 2. My name is Pete, and today we complete another episode of our Legend Iron Man walkthrough of XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. Last time we left off after successfully taking out an Advent General, that in turn countered a potentially dangerous dark event, and we also started hunting down the Chosen Assassin. For most of the episode, we also spend our time scanning at the Skirmisher HQ to speed up building and excavation times, and so we are just a few days away from finally finishing the construction of the infirmary, and we will also shortly be able to begin the construction of our very first power relay. For now though, let's jump in and see what today's episode has in store for us. Alright, after not a whole lot of action on the world map for a few weeks, we now finally have another resistance rumor, although this one only gives us supplies and we have an uncollected supply drop waiting for us as well, so I think we'll stick with the skirmish HQ for a few more days instead. Avenger plotting new course. Shortly after then, we are informed that another patch of alien debris has been cleared, and this is where we will now build the aforementioned power relay. Maximum power consumption reached. And yes indeed, with maximum power consumption already reached, we don't actually have any other options here, so let's spend 100 supplies and get this next building project underway. Power relay construction initiated. Now, since we just finished an excavation, we also have another engineer available now, and we could use him to speed up the construction. However, in my opinion, there is no need to do that, as the power relay alone does not really do anything for us. What's much more important is the facility that we build afterwards. Still, we are not going to speed up the excavation of that building spot either. Instead, we are going to staff the engineer in our resistance ring. Assigning Mr. Dendra to this facility will speed up all of our covert actions, and even though a 33% reduction is not too noticeable with only 5 days left on our current one, this can be very helpful as soon as we start the next one. And with just one more construction day left on the infirmary, we will have another engineer free to use in just a moment, so let's keep scanning and then assign him. Alright, there we are, finally we have ourselves an infirmary, and that means that all of our injured soldiers will now heal 50% faster. Commander. The infirmary can be used to improve the recovery process of our wounded soldiers, and over time they'll also recuperate from any negative conditions they've picked up in combat. We can also speed up the process through therapy if needed. Okay, so the infirmary's description might in fact be a little bit confusing, because it says here that by staffing an engineer in the facility we can decrease healing times. That is true, but does not change the fact that the infirmary alone already does the same, so staffing an engineer here is really only necessary if we want to have super fast healing. In addition, we can also move individual soldiers in here to remove negative traits, which we have thankfully not yet acquired, and we can also upgrade the infirmary with the Hyper Vital module for 80 supplies and 2 units of power. Doing so would then allow us to instantly heal a soldier, although this can only be used once per game per character. So for the moment, we'll leave things as they are and can now move our engineer Isaac Schmidt over to excavation duties, ensuring that we have a free building space as soon as the power relay is finished. And with that, we can now keep scanning and we will keep doing so at the Skirmisher HQ, not only because of the decreased building time, but also because we receive some intel every time we do so, and we are very very close to the 160 intel needed to make contact with the next region. First of all though, Oscar Soler, nicknamed Zucchini, finishes his specialist training in the GTS, and that means we can now assign our next candidates and we don't actually have too many rookies left. Only three characters currently remain who have not yet received a class, and today we are going with Alexis Yodar, nicknamed Jitters, who will now become a sharpshooter. As always, we will take a closer look at their biography as soon as we take them out into combat for the first time. For now, they can spend the next 10 days in the GTS and we can keep scanning. Commander, the aliens continue to make progress on the Avatar project. If we're going to slow them down, we'll need to move fast. Alright, so the Avatar project is moving along, and if we want to stop it, we need more intel. But before we can acquire enough to make contact with the next region, our small covert actions team is ambushed. 
You might remember these were the guys we sent out to hunt the assassin in the last episode, and getting ambushed was a risk associated with that mission. That risk has now become a reality and that means we need to extract our three-person squad and it also looks like we will once again have Lost present at the mission site, which should definitely make things a bit more interesting. And since our team was already selected in the covert action screen, we have no way to prepare ourselves for this. We will have to make do with the three people we sent out and therefore jump right into the action. You've got no time to waste. Break cover and move to the extraction point on the double. Alright then, here we go, no concealment and only three squad members under our control. And just as a quick reminder, those three are Warhawk, Vintage Blade and Sapphire West. To get us started, we have the high ground and with a lot of buildings on the map, we might be able to keep that for the majority of the mission, even though we have quite a bit of distance to cover until we actually make it to the extraction zone. And that is also our only objective and we can take as long as we need to complete it. So with no enemies in sight on a careful first turn, let's activate Overwatch and see what happens. On Overwatch. More hostiles Great inbound. one, your team is compromised. We're picking up advent response forces inbound on your position. Alright, so we've got enemy reinforcements dropping in on the next turn, and since we won't be able to get everyone into positions where they are completely safe, I would say the best thing to do here is to get ready for a fight. So we are dropping an aid protocol on our most vulnerable soldier, Specialist Vintage Blade, and then we can put the entire squad on Overwatch and hope that the high ground works in our favor. Okay, so we've got the standard advent squad here, an officer and two troopers. Let's see who triggers reaction fire first and who survives. Got some advent here. Alright, so we've only got one trooper left as all three reaction shots find their target and since Advent used the turn to drop in we also don't get shot at immediately, which is why we should be able to end this fight without casualties, at least on our side. Target neutralized. And there we go, the critical hit from our ranger clears the area and gives him the promotion. In the meantime, the rest of our squad can already keep moving and again stay on the high ground as much as possible. Keep in mind that we do have Lost on the map as well, but those usually appear down on the ground, so staying up here should keep us somewhat safe. Now, with no action on the alien turn, our next destination is that balcony that you can already see in the shadows here. On your order. But since we are in no hurry to get there, let us first regroup a bit, assemble Vintage Blade and Sapphire West at the door and allow Warhawk to catch up a little. Once again then, no action on the alien turn, but it looks like the Lost will make an appearance on the next one. For now though, we should keep moving, so let's open the door. And from what we can tell, the room is clear, so let's move Sapphire West towards the window. Alright, and we have discovered a lone advent trooper. Yes, enemy types and numbers are of course tailored a bit to the fact that we only have three people to work with here. Still, behind full cover and with no way to flank them from up here, this could be a tough nut to crack. Still, we'll try our best, starting off with Alyssa's lightning hands, basically a free pistol shot, allowing us to take another one afterwards. Yeah, I didn't get it. And with only a 60% hit chance, the shot unfortunately misses, but again, we can take another one. And at least that connects and also gives her an ability point. Now let us see if Specialist Blade can deal the killing blow. Unfortunately she cannot, which means it is now time for Ranger Warhawk to move up, who I originally wanted to use a grenade with, but as you can see we are just short, which might actually be for the better, as the explosion would also immediately trigger the swarm. 
and despite only having a 44% hit chance, somehow Warhawk gets the kill. Definitely a clutch, clutch move from our Ranger. And it also means that the Lost now have to waste their turn simply appearing and do not get a full turn to move and potentially strike. All of that results in five new enemies in a safe distance below us. For the moment though, only four of them are visible to us and we should hopefully be able to take care of all four with Sharpshooter Sapphire West. Lovely. With her last move then, we can block the ladder, just in case, while Blade and Warhog take up positions at the window and go on overwatch. Good copy, moving on target. Moving to overwatch. Okay, two misses, but with the ladder blocked and this one also just being a regular lost and not a fast moving dasher, we are safe for the moment. So how about we give Vintage Blade the very first kill of a young career? It's down. All right, lovely. That is the lost taken care of for now. I'm sure there will be more though. Until they arrive though, we should hopefully be able to cross the street and get into that building on the other side. For now, Sapphire West can make the first move and thankfully find that the upper floor is empty. So let's catch up with our specialist while Ranger Warhawk once again falls behind to take care of a reload. Let's rock! On the alien turn then, everything remains quiet and we have already found our next destination, as the two balconies in the shadows over here seem to be directly adjacent to each other, which should hopefully mean that we can cross from one building to the other without touching the ground. For now though, let's start things off by moving into the first building and scouting out the street below, which thankfully does not reveal any hostiles this time, and so we can allow the rest of the squad to catch up and end an uneventful turn. Once again then, no enemy movement and indeed it looks like we can use the two balconies here to cross over. So let's do that with our specialist vintage blade. We've got advent here. Okay, so we have discovered another lone advent trooper and they were smart enough to move up to the high ground as well. However, their spot on the balcony now puts them into a rather dangerous position. With the second Lost Swarm not yet announced, we can safely move up our Ranger and throw a grenade at the trooper. Either it kills them immediately or it blows up the balcony and then the fall damage will take care of the rest. As you can see here, I also tried to find a spot to perhaps blow up parts of the balcony on our side as well, just as an additional protection against the Lost, but ultimately I could not find one. Alright, there we go, that's the kill. The Lost are now on their way, but very importantly, the trooper did actually die from fall damage, and as a result, the loot they were carrying was not destroyed. And since we also still have the Vulture Resistance Order active, this means there will be some extra loot in the pile, so we should definitely go down there and grab it before the timer expires. For now though, let's keep advancing and keep our eyes open. Again, another swarm is coming. So the swarm has appeared somewhere in the room below us and we want to keep our distance of course, so it's a good thing that Warhawk can get to the loot without having to dash. Orders confirmed, moving out. Alright, and we pick up quite a bit here, an advanced hair trigger, an advanced expanded magazine and an advanced scope. That is definitely a lovely haul this early in the game and absolutely shows why that vulture resistance order can be worth it. For now though, let's get back to the high ground and keep advancing towards the door into the next area with our other two. However, on this turn we won't go through and instead go on overwatch. I'm ready. Again then, we have no dashes in this swarm, so none of the lost are able to get up to us just this moment. So let us open the door then and see if the area beyond is clear. So 
so far so good, and Sophie doesn't spot anything by moving up closer either. We are getting pretty close to the extraction zone though, so let us once again block the ladder with Sapphire West here. And then, just because it should be faster that way, we will actually loop around on the ground with Ranger Warhawk. The Lost are all a good distance away and should not be able to make it up to him in one turn, and this way we avoid that he falls back too far. After all, as a Ranger, he should be at the front line. The Lost then seem to be a little bit confused by our moves, but as expected, none of them actually get into striking range, and so we can start the next turn by blocking off two more access points, which actually gets Vintage Blade into the extraction zone. It also, somewhat unexpectedly, reveals another Advent Trooper, but luckily we have not yet moved with our Ranger. After quickly taking care of a Lost, we can now go for the Slash attack. And thankfully that hits and probably strengthens his case as this mission's MVP. With Specialist Blade then, we will stay here and not evacuate just yet. After all, we might be able to kill a few more Lost before we leave. And again, you can see what blocking off ladders and climbing spots does. Yes, it might feel a bit cheap at first, but if you think about it, it is pretty hard to climb a ladder with someone standing right at the top of it, and on Legend difficulty we need to use every trick in the book. And because this is a completionist playthrough, we will of course not leave without dispatching of the remaining four enemies here. So let's start things off with three shots from Ranger Warhawk. And perfect, that leaves only one more standing and that one is injured already, so let's drop down with Miss West here to deal the killing blow. Neutralized. Wonderful, and since lost kills are all free actions, we can now start to evacuate. First up, Specialist Blade, then Sharpshooter West. I'm And last but not least, a Ranger Warhawk. All members of Wraith One have been successfully evac. And there we go, a flawless ambush mission that could have hardly gone any smoother. Admittedly, though, only that first trio of enemies could have really caused us any problems. Even that clutch 44% shot from Warhawk probably only prevented a few minor injuries. But still, let's give respect where it's due. Our first covert operation with some complications is finally in the books. Let's hope they all go that smooth, Commander. Great work. And with our soldiers coming back quite tired from this one, we have a promotion for Ranger Warhawk to take care of, who after some very important moves in this mission has made it to the rank of Corporal. As a result, we will now give him the Blade Master ability for increased melee damage. We already have two Rangers with Phantom and this now makes it two on the Blade Master side as well. Moving on then, we have our list of loot and this time we did not actually take back any of the corpses. Still, we did acquire three very nice weapon upgrades, with the advanced scope probably being the most useful. And since we started this mission straight from the world map, we are also now brought back here and immediately receive a reminder about the still outstanding supply drop. Now, we will take care of that soon, but first we are also informed about another resistance rumor, this one once again for supplies, but with 7 days to complete it, the still outstanding monthly drop, which takes only 3 days, will likely be more efficient. Our people seem to work well together, Commander. After the successful extraction of our team, the covert action is then also complete, and so our soldiers gain some valuable XP and we are one step closer to hunting down the assassin. We just got some new intel on the Chosen. Pretty soon, we'll be able to take them down permanently. And yes, as the triangle in the middle here very clearly shows, the hunt is far from over. We will have to perform two more covert actions of this kind to finally find her, and until then she will continue to be a thorn in our side. You're starting to win over my people, Commander. And that says something. Now on the bright side, since this is sort of the main quest line with the Reapers, we have now gained some influence with them, so we can now also assign them a monthly resistance order, and we have also received two additional covert actions. If you've got something new for us, Commander, my Reapers are up for taking on some additional orders. 
We have also received another resistance order. Just as a reminder, we currently still have Vulture active. This one here increases the supplies we get with every monthly drop by 15%, which in my opinion is not that useful in the early game, where 15% more does not really make that much of a difference. Our influence with the resistance factions has motivated them to share some new information on the Chosen. Now, with the resistance ring constructed, we can now immediately launch our next covert action. And this is where I would actually like to hear what you think we should do next. If we already had a lieutenant rank soldier, we could now continue the hunt for the assassin. But unfortunately, we don't. And that means we need to occupy ourselves with something else. Now, fabricating a new PCS is probably not the highest thing on our to-do list. I just quickly wanted to show it as it is the new action we have now received from the Reapers. However, what might be worth it is to perhaps recruit ourselves a scientist through the skirmishes, which would then speed up research times by a further 25%. If that isn't enough for you, however, we could now also start hunting the hunter, beginning the same chain of covert actions that we just started with the Reapers. Alternatively, we could also turn our eyes towards the third and so far undiscovered resistance faction. Yes, we also still need to make contact with the Templars. Getting to know them and potentially acquiring one of these psionic specialists could definitely be very interesting as well. But again, we can only complete one of these actions at a time. So please feel free to let me know what you would do next. And because I would like to hear your input regarding this next covert action, we will actually make the cut at this point. The next episode will then likely be a little bit longer again. But for today, I simply thought that this would make for a great point to wrap things up. So as always, if you have enjoyed the video, then I would be very happy if you could leave a thumbs up. And if you like what I'm doing and want to support me and my channel further, then you can go ahead and subscribe to stay up to date, grab some merch over on shop.peatcomplete.com or check out and maybe even pledge to the Pete Complete Patreon. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.